All right, good morning. It's Trevin, and this morning I'm joined by Dr. Buckley. He is one of the surgeons at UT Health Austin, and I just found this out, but April is Esophageal Cancer Awareness Month, and I had a question, doctor. Are you seeing a rise in the incidence of esophageal cancer in young folks, and what do you attribute some of that increase to, and is that different from in years past? April is Esophageal Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, esophageal cancer is one of the fastest growing cancers, if not the fastest growing cancer in westernized countries. And it's actually risen 600% since 1975 when the first uh, acid-reducing drugs uh, were put out. We are seeing a slight rise in, uh, in younger folks. Uh, so typically, uh, esophageal cancer, 85% of them are in patients that are white males over the age of 50. But we found uh, an alarmingly increasing rate in those that are younger than 50. So the answer to your question is yes, it is different uh, than in previous years. And we're attributing that to really a rise in the prevalence of GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. So that's where stomach contents come up into the esophagus. The typical symptom people notice is heartburn. It's really, that's, you know, a lot of that has to do with lifestyle and maybe a little bit of uh, gaining weight, but we're seeing that in a lot younger patients and treating GERD in a lot younger patients. And because mm -hmm. esophageal cancer is associated with GERD, we're seeing a, a consequent rise in the number of young folks getting esophageal cancer. Well, what are some of the warning signs for folks of esophageal cancer? Yeah. So earliest warning sign usually is trouble swallowing. So either painful swallowing or, or, you know, you're out getting a P. Terry's burger and it's just not going down the way it used to. That's one of the early signs. Unexplained weight loss, um, you're losing weight for some unknown reason and you're not trying to. Um, blood in the stool or even vomiting up blood can be one. Even chronic pain that's different than your typical heartburn pain um, in the chest is another sign. So there, some of them are kind of nebulous. Uh, honestly. And that's why, you know, if you're starting to have some of these things, we always say, go see uh, your physician, go see a specialist, uh, gastroenterologist, uh, and, uh, and get that diagnosed. Well, we can't let anything get in the way of those P. Terry's double cheeseburgers. Can heartburn or acid reflux, which I assume is really common in a lot of different people, can that cause esophageal cancer? Yeah. Thanks for digging into that. So, you know, basically gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, and again, the symptom, usual symptom is heartburn, but it can be symptoms up in your throat, uh, neck. It can lead to Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus is a change in the lining of the esophagus where it basically says, I don't want to be the esophagus anymore. I want to be the stomach. And so we have a change in cells. And that's usually a reaction to kind of damage in the esophagus from heartburn. And anytime you have that change in cells, that puts you at risk for cancer. So Patients with Barrett's esophagus uh, are at a 40 times greater risk than the uh, average person of getting esophageal cancer. And that's, that's where that uh, kind of trend line goes. Now, the good news is, is Barrett's esophagus, you know, it's actually relatively common in patients with heartburn and GERD. About 15% uh, will have Barrett's esophagus. I, in fact, actually have Barrett's esophagus. And then the important thing is that we get that diagnosis and put them in a surveillance program so it doesn't lead to esophageal cancer. So if, if really the take home message for today is if you have GERD and you should be under the care of a physician, you need to know if you've got Barrett's esophagus. We've got all sorts of fancy uh, devices here, especially at UT, to diagnose Barrett's. Uh, I'm obviously passionate about it again since I have it. But if you get Barrett's esophagus, we can put you in a surveillance program and we can make sure you don't go on to develop esophageal cancer. So that's the really the big message there. When would someone know that it's a good time to be seen? Sure. Well, um, of course, there's lots of over-the-counter treatments. If you go into CVS or Walgreens or HEB, you're going to see lots of over-the-counter treatments for heartburn. And those actually work you know, very well. But if they either A, don't work very well, um, and or you, you've kind of run out that two-week timeline and you need to be on them chronically, that's a great time to go talk to your primary care doctor uh, or a specialist um, and uh, talk about treatment options. About 40% of patients on those medications don't get complete relief. We've got surgical solutions for them, uh, for that type of patient as well. And then again, we've got great, uh, great screening protocols for uh, Barrett's esophagus. Some of them involve endoscopy, some of them involve just a little balloon now that we're uh, actually trialing here at UT uh, that can pull out cells uh, with very minimal discomfort and uh, no time off. 
uh, really. And uh, so we've got lots of great things happening here at UT. Well, let's use me for an example. Um, I take, you know, a Tums, you know, maybe on average once a week, every couple of weeks. Is that within a safe parameter for not coming in? Yeah, I do. I think that that's a, that's a very safe parameter. Uh, you know, really heartburn, the classic symptom, I mean, it can be caused by lots of different things. So typically people think about spicy foods, but it's really not the spices that bother people. It's uh, caffeine, nicotine, um, alcohol, any of the mints actually relax that sphincter that divides your esophagus from your stomach. So if you go out and have a big meal and have any of those things, you're going to get heartburn. Well, Dr. Buckley, once again, thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Dr. Buckley, one of the surgeons at UT Health Austin. Give them the phone number, give them the website, tell the folks where they can find you guys. It's uh, uthealthaustin.org is our website or 844-442-8784.